put skew and call skew in different underlines. Is it underlings or underlines? Underlines. Agreed, underlings agreed. are like, you know, me. Like you. Me and you to Tom. We are underlings, okay? We're not <laughs> underlying. Sponsored by the CBOE, <laughs> our friends there. Let's see what we got. You want me to read to you? Uh, sure, whatever's easier for you. How do you guys normally do it? Tom usually reads, but he butchers them. I mean, he really, he, I think he's a little dyslexic. Maybe. Like he'll, he'll say Well, it's words a 2020 vision. He doesn't really have the 2020 vision, so he can't really actually read it. Just kind of going did, off you, the little spot. Were you, were you in, were you in the office when I took, when I put an eye test up for him? Of course. We gave him the, I gave him the eye test. Yeah. He cheated. All right, well, let's see what we got here with this market measure sponsored by the CBOE. Put skew and call skew in different underlines. Certain assets tend to have call or put skew depending on perceived directional risk in the market. I would say perceived directional risk in the market is accurate, but it's really the velocity of the move in that direction. Market ETFs such as SPY tend to have put skew. Agreed. Because there is yes. no more fear to the downside, because there is, because there is more fear to the downside raising put premium. I think there's a little bit more to that. Would you agree? Like I think there's put skew in SPY, IWM, Qs, maybe yeah. a lot or most of the ETFs that have perceived downside fear, because that's where you're looking to get protection. If I am a fund manager or anybody else, even a, a retail investor like you and I, if I have multiple positions in different stocks that are all reflected in the SPY, if I want to neutralize some of that risk, I prefer actually to go to the individual stocks. But a lot of people will look at SPY and say, all right, I'm going to buy some of these cheap puts or these put spreads in SPY. And if we go lower, I'll have some sort of protection there. It's an easy one-click way of getting downside protection. Would you agree? Yeah, they're also the most widely held. I mean, not everybody has a portfolio of individual stocks. I mean, a lot of That's people true. are just in SPY or some other ETFs, Vanguard funds, whatever. And right. the quickest, easiest way to hedge them is via, you know, the ETFs. So right. I, I agree How with does... your point in that, you know, there, there's always going to be put skew in these because everybody is passively long them and they're, you know, the most liquid and most, you know, efficient way to get short exposure. There will be times when it's when it's flat or even a little bit of call skew in SPY. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's the two, three, four, five percent of the time. I mean, the 95 percent of the time, it's always put skew. Agreed, 100 yes. percent. Um, how does put call skew change as investors perceive more risk in the market? Let's use SPY and gold uh, as examples. These are going to be two extreme examples. So it'll be a good way of looking at it from an extreme study. X SPY, GLD, BIX, 2005 to 2024. 45 day, 16 delta puts and calls. So, kind of a classic uh, standard deviation strangle they're looking at here. Plot the average uh, prices of the call put options per 100 shares of the underline for each of the following IV index ranges 10 to 15, 15 to 20, which is where we are right now, 20 to 25, so on and so on, up to 45, 50. I don't think you're going to have too many number of occurrences at 45.50, but let's see what we got. Uh, the put strike distances is in red. Uh, the call strike distances from at the money uh, is is in white, the number below. For a skewed underline such as SPY, puts are consistently more expensive than calls, roughly twice as much. As implied volatility increases, both calls and puts are worth more as a percentage of the underlying price, three to four times more, as investors are willing to pay more to protect themselves. I think I think the, the 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 lines between the lines here is that volatility expands on both sides, and we saw a good indication, or not really an indication, a good example of that back on you know August you know fourth, fifth, and sixth there when the market uh, sold off, and even though we came when we came back, the implied volatility was so high in those calls that they didn't move when volatility started to contract here so volatility increases on both sides of the coin calls and puts no matter if there's put or call skew but the, uh, the key here is how much more the puts increase than the calls i mean the, when you when you think about volatility and and realize volatility when it comes into play like we had a week ago the market's now down eight or nine percent whatever the number was i think it was close to ten percent 
from high to mm -hmm. low in, in the span of a couple of days, volatility explodes. You're now at a lower price, and those puts are priced you know, two times what they were prior to that event, even though the underlying asset is lower. That's why, you know, volatility is something we focus on so heavily is because, you know, you've had the realized volatility and those puts are, you know, the are two, two X's, uh, were two times the distance away are now two X the price with the asset lower, meaning those, those puts that were a dollar three or four days ago when the stock's at 200, are now two dollars with the stock at one hundred. That's volatility for you, and that's why taking advantage of high implied volatility is so beneficial. Obviously, volatility, if it's high, it can go higher, and you can have some delta risk. But that's really what we're trying to capture: is that after you have this realized volatility, the, the, these puts they're way overpriced relative terms. In relative terms. Yep, well said. Good job. Well, now looking at the distance between them. So, however, also notice that the put prices increased at a faster rate than the than the call prices. That's what Nick was really just alluding to just a moment ago. And you can see how that red line goes up a lot more vertical as the white line kind of stays consistent, obviously, because we're looking at the distance away from at the money. So all the way down at the bottom, when volatility is much lower, 10 to 15%, you know, they're they're you're closer to at the money relative. That's what Nick was just talking about a yeah. moment ago. To when volatility is much higher, 4550 or even 3540, yeah. you can see that the volatility is a lot higher. Even 2025 is a lot higher. Uh, the distance away when you get you know volatility expansive. I was just gonna add, Joe. I know this doesn't put it put this into context, but the the range we're looking at that super wide range. That's like what we experienced last week. Right, so those come once every couple of years. You don't get that range all the time, but most of the time, the ninety-five percent of the time, you're in that ten to thirty percent range, right? And yes. so, yes. you know, that's why we look for when when volatility gets to that thirty or forty mark, when the VIX is at eighteen, nineteen, twenty. That's why we're, we're always talking about okay, this is the time where you got to lay out some risk, versus when you know, volatility is low when we're looking at a VIX in the 14, 15, 16 handle, or even yeah. lower, we're not allocating as much because that, you know, you go from, you get a 100% increase from a 13 VIX to an 18 VIX in terms of the premium in the options. You get, when you go from an 18 VIX to a 40 VIX, it's a three or four X difference in, in value of those options. Well said. I didn't think you were listening during Bat versus Bat many, many years ago, but obviously you were. I'm very, very proud. I couldn't be prouder at this moment. So well, afterwards, when you, we son. when we get off the show, Tom would say he would pull me aside and say, "Hey, here's here's really what you have to know." Let me clarify what that. He would clarify you. what you what you would say wrong. There, therefore, while put premiums are typically higher than call premium for different underlines, they are even richer when IV is higher and there is more perceived risk. Exactly what Nick was just saying. According to the example, higher IV tends to exuberate, put skew. Exasperate. Oh, thank you, because I didn't think I said it right. It's okay. Exasperate. Exaggerate. It's a sexier word than exaggerate. Thank you, son. I was just testing your Kansas education. This means that short premium traders are further compensated. Do you know what compensated is? Of course you don't know what compensated is. You work for Tom Sosnoff for directional <laughs> risk to the downside in this case, when markets are more volatile and market risk, particularly directional market risk is higher. Anything to add there or you're all good? Amazing job out of you. You did, you did fast. Excellent, please. Generally, when IV and prices are positively correlated, the underlying will have call skew and inverse correlation usually implies put skew and they are 100% correct here. You're looking at uh, gold in orange, I believe, SPY in purple. No, I'm sorry, gold. Gold's got to be the one in green, right? In green is SPY. VIX is gold. Or no, VIX, green VIX. is VIX. Blue is SPY. The... Oh, they're doing VIX SPY and VIX gold plus the core, plus or minus correlation. So yeah, what it's saying it here is that you get more put skew. You know, VIX and SPY are negatively correlated. When you get a big move in the VIX, you're going to have more put skew in SPY which is intuitive. With gold, you don't have that same relationship because gold typically has upside skew. There's a lot of factors that go into why that is from you know, it being a 
commodity and has a perceived price floor. So, you know, they're theoretically gold is probably not going to zero. I know we've seen oil go below zero, but you know, the, the market price is that scarcity is more probable than it go, you know, it being valueless. Then the cut, then the carrying cost, storage cost yes. exceeding the price of the commodity. That's, that, that's a, I don't think that comes into play for gold, but yes. Yes, agreed. Gold Thanks. being a scarcity Let's, because there's the limited. Takeaways, option skew can be intuitively thought of as the directional and magnitude of the underlying velocity of risk. For equities, this risk is to the downside, whereas commodities, seeing the velocity risk to the upside. That was what we just saw on the last slide. Put skew becomes more pronounced when more fear in the market when we're talking about SPY. Therefore, while risks are higher for premium sellers, which market which market volatility is high, when is what they meant to say, market volatility is high, they're even more compensated for directional risk. And yeah, that is why we look to ramp up when volatility is high and kind of pare down when the strategies that we're using aren't getting paid for as much when volatility is low, like you got right now.